Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we'll be taking a look at the Asus ROG Pugio. It's a Latin name actually, so it's not Pugio or whatever, it's Pugio, as what Google Translate tells me at least. So this one is a very interesting mouse. Again, the packaging is the Asus styling, uh, ROG styling actually, it's a bit on the darker side, more gamery look with that flap open there and even the ROG Pugio has the switchable switch. Uh, I don't mean to say that, I mean it's a swappable switch and it also has an ROG accessory case for you to store two little buttons and also two switches. So opening up the unboxing experience is, well, rather simple, just pull out the tab right here and then you can open up the entire box. Fairly simple, I would say fairly standard as usual and once you open up, you get the mouse inside a shell like this and lift it up again and you will see all this kind of documentation, a pouch, ROG badge actually with 3M adhesive and the mouse itself. Uh, pretty neat actually, I wouldn't complain either way. And this is the ROG Pujo itself. As you can see right here, it takes on a very symmetrical design with two side buttons on each side. And you also have that rubber grip on both sides as well. So this is an ambidextrous mouse and it is symmetrical. Again, symmetrical is a very important word right here. So pulling out the plastic film and you can see beneath it, they actually decorated it very nicely. ROG Pugio and here is the accessory case itself. So once you open it up, here is what you see. Like I mentioned before, two little switches right there and the two interchangeable switches. So do not get confused. Uh, the ROG Pugio actually has a very interesting feature which I will highlight a bit here. So as you can see here, I just ripped off the uh, original two switches. So I'll swap it in with the one included in the case and it will block all the switches from getting clicked. Uh, so this is a very interesting design like the Logitech G900. Uh, the side buttons, if you don't use to, if you don't wish to use it, you can just swap it off and replace it with that one piece of hard button, and you cannot click on those two switches. And I find this idea very noble indeed, and it is literally catered towards ambidextrous users. And uh, well, maybe you just like more side buttons, and maybe the one on the right isn't really your thing but you would wish to use it for macro some days and you can program it using the ROG Armory software right here very simple very straightforward and uh, it has onboard memory too actually so what about opening up the entire mouse and have a look inside just like the ROG Gladius 2 you have these four little tabs right there you just open it up very simple with a flat head screwdriver that's what i do here actually you can uh, opt for another method and then four phillips screws standard issue right here once you've got that open you just have to lift it up a bit and then push inwards from the two clickers at the top side at the front so once you push it in, you get it open, but be careful not to rip it off right away as there is a ribbon cable connecting the DPI cycle button at the top with the PCB itself. So disconnect that and you have the ROG Pugio dismantled. So having a look right here, it's actually quite cramped as what I would say. And uh, yeah, at the bottom there, there is an RGB LED and uh, we'll show more about the lighting a bit later. So let's take a look at the mouse interior right here. As you can see here, four side buttons, it's mounted uh, laterally and it seems like you can solder your own if you wish so and uh, you can even change the DPI button at the top but again you will need some soldering skills. 
so fairly modular I would say fairly serviceable if anything actually happens to your ROG Peugeot And here's a little easter egg right there, as you can see, there is an ROG logo inside the PCB, printed on the PCB itself. I find this very interesting because ASUS is the only one who prints their logos everywhere. And uh, swapping the switches, the left and right click switches is fairly straightforward and simple, just like the uh, ASUS Gladius 2. Uh, well, just pull it out and then take the new one, slot it in, and you're done! And here's a comparison of the two switches that's included with the ROG Peugeot. Again, it's a standard issue, standard thing, just like the ROG Gladius 2. Those two switches are actually the same. Uh, when it comes to the USB cable itself, the ROG Peugeot is a bit interesting. Um, I would say that the ROG Peugeot is very serviceable. You can actually swap your USB cable as it just uses a 5-pin, uh, I think, 5-pin cable. And if you don't wish to use the included one, you can swap it for something else and just, well, splice it if you need it. And uh, there's one bit of issue I have with the ROG Peugeot. Uh, it's not actually a very small mouse, it's actually quite huge. Um, for someone with a relatively above average palm size, I would say, I, I find it quite difficult to use it in palm grip, uh, in claw grip actually, because the butt of the mouse is a bit too big and using it in claw grip just doesn't give me enough flexibility. Uh, claw grip is a no-go for me, but palm grip and the fingertip grip are both fine. So that's my first look and unboxing and review of the ROG Peugeot. I hope you like this video. Uh, hit that like button if you like it and uh, leave me down a comment. We, would you actually buy an ROG Peugeot? Um, we do have a full review link up top and in the description below. Do check that out. Thanks for watching and have a nice day everyone. It's Amnasi Lamar.